Hey guys, in today's video we're gonna talk about Google Opal. If you haven't heard about Google Opal yet, it's a really cool tool. That's why I recommend you watch this video until the end, because you will empower your workflow with additional AI tool that could help you with your productivity. Basically, the Google Opal is AI app builder that doesn't require any coding skill. By using simple English language, you can build AI app. And in today's video, I'm going to show you a couple of examples. This will be simple and easy to follow tutorial about Google Opal. If you're ready, then let's get started. This app initially launched in US only, and then in October and November, it was rolled out to other countries. And currently almost everyone can try this tool. All you need, just a Google account, and that's it, because the app's still in beta, so Google allows everyone to use it absolutely free. You can think of this app as an agent builder that could connect multiple Google tools together. This way you will create a simple mini apps that allows you to do many different things. For instance, you can use this as a researcher tool, book recommendation system, learning app, writing app, and so on. In short, the possibilities are endless. If you still didn't get how to use Opal, don't worry, I'm going to show you a couple of examples and after that everything will be clear. In order to get started with Opal, open website opal.google, then at the right hand corner click the sign in button, sign in into your Google account or create a new one. After that you will be redirected to this dashboard. At the first page you will see a couple of examples of mini applications. Google called it gallery. So as you could see, here we have blog post writer, Google calendar magic linker, learning with YouTube, product researcher, spelling bee, many, many other mini apps. Pick the one that you would like to explore and simply click on it. I'm going to show you the first one, learning with YouTube. So this is an example of mini app. At the left hand side, you see the structure of the app. And at the right hand side, you see the preview. In the left hand side, each card represents a step in your mini app. If you are familiar with make.com or n8n or any other workflow builder, it's basically the same thing. So you define the steps, do certain manipulation with the output, and after that get the result. So in our first example, the first step is collect the URL of the YouTube video, then the next step extract video transcript. In order to do that we are going to use Gemini Flash and we have two parallel steps. One is for analyze educational content and another one for generate quiz. And the last step is display report. In our example it will be a simple web page. Before we dive deeper into the interface, let's run our preview application and see what actually it does. You can do preview at the right hand side or you can click this toggle see the application in the full screen after that simply click the start button paste the youtube url and hit the enter button then depend on the complexity of your app it could take up to 5-10 minutes and after that you will get the result as you can see in this example it is a web page with the short summary of the video and the key concept inside the video. And we also have an interactive quiz. It could help you understand how you get the subject. As you could see, it's really cool. It is a very simple example, and it will demonstrate the power of this app. If you still didn't get it, let me show you one more example. In this time, we are going to use the blog post writer. Simply click on it, and then you will see the structure of this mini app. As you can see, at here we have six steps. So at this time, let's try to adjust the app a little bit. In order to do that, click Remix button at the top right corner. This section will create a copy of this application. So you will be able to adjust the steps, change the model if needed, change the instructions, and do other things. So basically, you can customize this mini app as you need. Let me briefly explain the interface a little bit. We have three navigation menu here, two menu inside the canvas. This menu allows you to control the canvas. You can zoom in, zoom out, change the view to fit the screen, and undo the previous action. You also have the input field. In this field, you can write any prompt to AI. So basically, you can say AI what things you want to add to the canvas into your workflow. And AI will does it for you. For instance, I ask AI to add a video generation functionality. 
into my workflow. And after about 20 seconds, you will see an additional step in your workflow. As you can see, in my instance, it is a video generation before the last step. You also can do it by yourself by using the desktop menu. But from the beginning, definitely try to use AI chat because it's faster. Okay, so basically, now for every item in your workflow, you can adjust settings. All you need, select the item from the canvas or simply click at the console link at the right menu and you will see each steps. In the console view, you actually can run your application step by step and see what output is produced and adjust the instruction if something is wrong. If you want to run the step, simply click this play button. Basically, this console view allows you to kind of debug this application because you will be able to see on what step the application is failed, if it's failed. Also have a chance to change different models and test which one you like. Simply click on the item in the canvas and then right hand side, this drop down, you can select different models. As you could see, Google allows you to play with different ones, so you can adjust your application and tailor it to different models. And of course, you also can change the instructions. As you can see, so far so good. Uh, I don't have any problem with the application. I'm running different steps separately, but only for show you how to debug the application. At some point in time, your application could fail specific steps. As you can see, like in my example, it could be due to the limitation or it could be due to the fact that previous step produced wrong output. In my instance, the output that previous step produced violate Google rules. I have to adjust the instruction in order to make sure that my prompt for the next step follow the guidance. So all you need find the step where it's failed and adjust the previous step. In my instance, it was a script for a video. So I copy the error message, then go to the video instruction step. And at the end of the instruction, I will add the error from the video step. She don't have to pass the JSON. I can just remove the everything and keep only the main error message. And it will help guide the AI to produce the correct output for the next step. Okay, after that, let's go to the preview tab and run our application. I will insert the block topic and hit the enter button. And as you could see, this time everything is okay. I've got the images, I've got the video. So everything is working fine. If you're ready to start do the mini app from scratch, simply click this create button in the main dashboard. Then inside the canvas, you can start adding different steps to your workflow. Please select available options from the top menu and add them into the canvas. If you want to have user input, the first step, select user input. Then in the next step, you can select a different AI. Example, you can generate a text, video, images, and so on. You can do deep research, summary of certain things, and many, many other things. For each step, you actually can add different tools like web search, code execution, and so on. And you can select different models. After that, write your instruction and go to the next step. Once you finish editing your workflow, you can start build connection between different steps. For instance, to connect one step to another, simply pull this to the right step and it will be connected. This connection means the output of the first step will be input of the second step and so on. And as a result, you can create a web page. You can save the documents as a Google Doc, Google Sheets, Google Slides or make a web page with auto layout. All of these options are available in this drop down. If you need a dedicated tutorial about custom workflows, please let me know in the comments below. And if we'll have a lot of people, I'll make the video about it. And that's probably it for now. I hope you like this video. Definitely give a shot to Opal. Watch my other videos because they are really useful. And I really, really hope to see you in my next videos. Thank you so much for watching till the end and see you in my next video. Bye.